بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله I thought it would be مناسب and something beneficial uh, for us to go over uh, a beautiful beautiful kalima or beautiful short talk that our Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Razak uh, Al Badr Ibn Abdul Mahsan Al Abad, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, that he uh, gave, uh, and we will simply try to translate and bring some of the benefits from this short uh, series of lessons. It should be probably a few sittings, and we'll begin. And it is an explanation of a hadith or an explanation. Uh, of a dua that's in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's the hadith, Allahumma anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika. Uh, o oh Allah, uh, assist me, you know, support me, assist me, aid me in your remembrance and in being grateful to you or being thankful to you. The Shaykh began, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم أجمعين أما بعد أرجو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك لنا فيما نقو ونسمع. So the Sheikh began after the introduction. He said, and I I I hope and I implore Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Uh, to give us blessings in what we say and what we listen to. And the context of this uh, short talk, this was after prayer, and so he's going to actually explain that in the first portion of what we'll read. And he said, وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَ مَا نَقُولُهُ وَنَسْمَعُهُ حُجَّةً لَنَا وَلَا عَلَيْنَا يَوْمَ لَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وكلمة في هذه الوقفة أيها الأخوة في دعوة تناسب هذا المقام مقام الفراغ من أداء هذه الصلاة العظيمة التي أكرمنا الله جل وعلا ومن علينا بأدائها. So the Sheikh then he said uh, that we ask that Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, makes this, makes what you hear, what you listen to, <clears throat> what we listen to, and what we say, uh, a proof or evidence supporting us, in support of us, not against us on the day we will meet Allah the Almighty. And my short talk today, my brothers, uh, is a call to that which is... Uh, um, useful or that which is uh, appropriate for uh, this time, and that and this time is the time in which we have finished praying, and uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has favored us, the Almighty, with with praying in congregation and performing the the prayer to Him Subhanahu wa Taala. And he has blessed us to be from its people, meaning the people of Salat, Ahl Salat, Ahl Iman. <clears throat> and he said, وَهِيَ دَعْوَةَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَتِي عَلَّمَهَا لِمُعَاذِ بِنْ جَبَلُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلْعَنْهُ قَالْ يَا مُعَاذِ وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأُحَبُّك لَأُحَبُّكَ وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأُحَبُّكَ فقال أوسيك يا معاذ لا تا لا تدا تدعنا في دبر كل صلاة تقول اللهم عني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك. The Sheikh then said he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said in in this this time this is a useful and pertinent. Uh, time to explain this uh, 
mentioned this da'wah or this this du'a, the supplication of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that he taught Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala in, in the hadith in which he said, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, uh, Wallahi, verily I love you. Wallahi, verily I love you. And he, so he repeated that twice. And he said, then he said, I advise you, O Mu'adh, to supplicate in the end of every salat with this this dua. Allahumma anni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatika. O Allah, assist me in remembering you, or you know, help me, support me in remembering you, and giving thanks to you. And perfecting uh, my worship of you. Then the Sheikh mentioned, he said, وَهَذْهِ دَعْوَةُ munasaba فِي هَذَا الْمَوْضِعِ أَدْبَارَ salawat تَمَامَ munasaba. And for the sake of time, we won't read all the Arabic because this is going to uh, increase taking our time and perhaps maybe it will take away from the benefit by having to listen to me labor through the Arabic language. Wallahu musta'an. So the Sheikh then he said, he said that this uh, pertinent supplication, meaning pertinent because it's pertinent to the time, uh, at the, it's pertinent because it, at the end of every prayer, this, so this has the, this is the perfect time to mention this uh, dua. He said, because verily, O Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you and generously given you and made easy for you your ability to come to the prayer. And he has blessed you and made you from its people. And that is a favor from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, upon you. And because verily the earth is full, full of people who don't pray. You know, they don't, they don't attend the prayer. And those who do attend it are few. And Allah the majestic and almighty and exalted has favored you from amongst those people and made easy for you and made it for you to be from the people of prayer, Ahlus Salat. And he said, so how many people that don't even hear the Adhan Aslan, they don't even hear the Adhan, you know, of course in America and in, in many places in the world, you know, you don't hear the Adhan, even in some Muslim countries, Wallahu Musta'an. And they have no concern for it. And how many people, they listen to the Adhan and they don't come, they don't uh, heed the call to prayer. And this is a travesty, Habitifillah, that we have here, where I'm in the land of Tawheed, Saudi. How many people that, since I've been here over the years, and witness how many people that play football next to the Haram, next to the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid, and they don't stop, and they continue their football game even till the prayer is finished and outside the prayer. And how many people wait in their cars sometimes, right near a masjid, waiting to go to finish their shopping, to go into the mall or go into a supermarket for something simple to get some milk. They would rather sit in their car and do whatever they're doing, maybe smoke cigarettes, maybe listen to music, whatever, but they refuse to pray. So this is a travesty, and this is what the sheikh is calling to attention. And then he mentioned the ayat, which is munasib for this. He said, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا sallā." Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they don't, you know, فَلَا uh, sadaka." I'm not sure if it refers to sadaka as in giving charity or sadaka in being truthful in their iman. وَلَا sallā," And they don't pray. 
And he's, then he says, so therefore, this is a great blessing upon you, meaning that Allah has favored you to even care and concern yourself with the prayer and establish the salat. He said, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَّى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَهَدٍ أَبَدًا ولكن الله يزكي من يشاء يزكي 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 من يشاء and then the sheikh mentions another ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم that if it weren't for the blessing of Allah upon you the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy, wa rahmatuhu, and his mercy. None of you would be purified. Not one, none of you would ever be purified. However, Allah purifies whomsoever He pleases. Look at this ayat. If we contemplate that ayat alone that the Sheikh mentioned, the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that the guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that should humble us to make us be away from arrogance, thinking that the guidance is from us, thinking that we have some sort of superiority, that we are deserving of his fadl, or that we're deserving, that we're ahl salat, we're salafi, we're this, we're that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us not to... Make tis, uh, uh, to, to zakta and, and, and fusukum. You know, don't. And that's the meaning of the ayat. That's not the, the actual ayat, the verse. Meaning that do not, do not uh, uh, you know, claim piety for yourself. And as Allah mentions in this ayat, If it wasn't for the blessing. The 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 the, the fadl that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and his mercy. Mazaka minkum min ahad and abada. None of you would ever be purified. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that the guidance is from him in him alone. So we forget that. May Yahdi Allah fuwa muhtad. Whoever Allah guides, He's guided. And whoever is misguided, they're misguided. No one can guide them. It's from Allah. Thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِنَ اللَّهَ يُزَكِّ مَنْ يَشَاءَ However, Allah... He purifies whomsoever he pleases. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he's the one who guides you to Islam. He's the one who guides you to the sunnah. The Salaf used to say that, Alhamdulillah, ala ni'mat sunnah. You know, all praise belongs to Allah. That not just I was guided to Islam, but the ni'mah of the sunnah. The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have the ni'mah azimah. Just think we could be people following, uh, blindly following figureheads that have so many acts of disobedience outwardly and distortions of Islam and lies against Ahlul Sunnah and lies against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and negating the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and claiming that their turq, their path, their tariqah is the way of salvation. But they call people to misguided bid'ah. And even zandaqah, some of them call people to kufr and disbelief. To grave worship, to worship the saints. Cry when you see my picture on the phone. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah ala sunnah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah ala hidayatillah ila sunnah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Have a ni'mah azimah. So don't become arrogant and think that you're guided and say, oh yeah, I'm Salafi. <laughs> I'm Salafi, you're misguided. No, don't ever claim, don't ever be arrogant. 
Be thankful and humble. That should humble you and know your shortcomings in practicing the sunnah and practicing the minhaj of the salaf. This should humble you, not make you arrogant. Then the shaykh, he mentions, and we'll stop there. So if you feel this, this blessing, this uh, benefit or superiority or greatness that the love of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has bestowed upon you. And that Allah has guided you to seek his assistance and his support. Because لِأَنَّ الْعُونَ بِيَدِهِ وَتَوْفِيقَ بِيَدِهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى فَكُلَّمَا فَرَقْتَ مِنْ صَلَاةِ فِي دب في, فِي دُبْرِهَا تَدْعُو بِهَذِهِ الدَّعْوَى So he says, all of, the, all of this, even the wanting guidance and even the wanting uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance, seeking his help, seeking his favor and assistance, this is all from tawfiq. It's all from uh, uh, the, the, the successes with Allah. The guidance is from Allah. The, the fact that you're seeking, seeking assistance from Allah is guidance from Allah. Is Allah's favor upon you? Just the fact that you want His favor. And it's all from Him. And every time that you finish your salat in the last portion, meaning, you know, after tashahud, then supplicate with this da'wah. Make this supplication in your, in, in, you know, before you finish your prayer. Allahumma anni, Allahumma anni, ala dhikrika wa shukri wa husna li ibadatika. Wa husni ibadatika. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ilm al nafir, as kin tayyibu amil al mutaqabil, and bless us with hidayah. And bless us to heed this call and bless the Shaykh for sharing and all of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, Qadeem wa Hadithin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.